moment ago, we just had a lot of feedback. Uh, you want to scooch over so I can come sure, sure. in here? <laughs> so, um, we just had a lot of insights, and I wanted to now have a panel to just discuss some of your thoughts on leadership. And I don't know where to begin. The John Nash stuff was pretty dark. Uh, <laughs> uh, your, your brutal honesty was pretty good. So, um, Maybe, maybe, let's start with a brutal honesty, because I mean, it, it, it's like two halves of the same pie, right? Which is like, to some extent, you've got to live in a world that you create, and these uh, new graduates create, but you also have to live in a world of brutal honesty, right? And it's like, oh wow, the world I'm creating is failing, <laughs> right? Time to face that. So I think uh, maybe riffing off that concept, do you have any advices uh, as a future leader that you can impart on our uh, soon-to-be graduates? Maybe we just pass the mic. <laughs> sure, I'll start. Um, so you know, I would say when you really think about leadership versus management, when you look at leadership, it's the people who sort of nurture and enhance the experience versus the managers who sort of tell and arrange. And I think those are massive differences, right? Because in the end of the day, as a leader, you are enhancing and nurturing that person's experience in life with your company. And if you're not gonna fit your company, nurturing them out of your company and onto the next. But I mean, you are, you are helping enhance that person's life in a way and helping sort of guide them to a better place within that organization as a leader. And I feel like most folks in management, they're literally just arranging the pieces within their company, right? And they're telling people, hey, I need you to do this, I need you to do that, I need you to get it done, there's a deadline, let's go. And there's a massive difference there, because the way you motivate is, is going to sort of really make a massive impact on the way your company performs. So I would say, Go towards the nurturing and enhancing, and go away from the telling, the deadlines, and arranging. I would agree with that. Good. That's a hard one to follow. Um, should we do intro? Do you want to? Yeah, you, sorry. Yeah, do you want to? <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. I'm a, I'm a GM at a company called Rocket Space. We have a tech campus downtown with about 160 startups. We've had folks like... It's like um, five blocks from here, right? Yeah, five blocks from here in 1 East Hanson. We've had folks like uh, Travis at Uber and folks at Spotify and about 18 unicorns come out of Rocket Space. We basically help startups grow. So we come out of a place like Founder Institute and you raise some seed funding and Series A and you want to come to a place where we can connect you with VCs and others and basically help you grow your business. Rocket Space, that's my name's plug. Rocket Space is a good place. All right. Alan? Nice. <laughs> yeah, so we'll pass it down, do a brief intro, and then yeah, yeah. thank you. <laughs> He's got a mic too, so we have two mics. Yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for coming out. Uh, congratulations to the graduates, and congratulations to FI for impacting so many people across the world. Definitely pursue entrepreneurship. Um, I'm Alan Sakyan. I host a science comedy show. I also, it's called Eureka. I also produce World's Fair Future Festivals. Sean, I know you and I have a meeting scheduled. Yep. We got to talk. Yep. Um, and so just some, uh, to piggyback off of what Ben was saying on <coughs> essentialism, basically that means laser focus. And uh, unashamedly push stuff that's not important to the side. Um, execution, execution, but also meditation and relaxation. Take care of your health while you're pursuing entrepreneurship because if you don't, you're going to break. And breaking is not good. And don't burn yourself out, don't burn your team out. Um, yeah, flotation therapy, meditation, exercising, even standing up right now and going, jumping jacks. Okay, all right, all right, good stuff, all right. And, I mean, that changes everything, right? I'm no longer just sitting here, but I've already gotten up. I've moved some blood flow around in my body. So this laser focus, make it a routine, a daily routine. So you wake up in the morning, and you go and you start your kettle. 
because you actually really want to drink some hot liquids in the morning. Who here wakes up with like a crappy throat every morning? <laughs> yeah, it's like a good amount of people, and it's, it's just, we really need to get some hot liquids in there, we'll get us going through the day. Your routine can include things like creative practices, like meditation, like exercise. Do that stuff in the morning, and then laser focus. And by laser focus, go through your inbox and pick the things that you really need to get done. Do the things that you know are going to be crucial to the growth of your business, and seriously, put the other stuff to the side. They are not as important. People will understand because you need to grow a business and make a business. So focus. And read Adam Gazzelli's book, uh, The Distracted Mind. He's a leading <coughs> neuroscientist. The Distracted Mind. He'll tell you everything you need to know about how to focus in today's crazy digital age. Woo! Um, hi, I'm Bastien. So I work in consumer finance now, doing new type of products for underbanked people, lending them money when they don't have access to finance uh, for a company called Insight. Um, so my brutal truth here is going to be, you're not the smartest one. If you follow their advice, you're going to hire them. So make sure that you listen to other people and don't try to assume that you know better how to do it. Yes, you know your subject well. Yes, you have a vision of everything that is happening in the company. But you should have people around you that know how to do specific tasks better than you. And so trust them and at least listen to them. And don't be just, I know better. It's my way or the, or, or the highway. So that would be my advice. Brandon, you want to go? Woo! My name is Brandon Stillman. Um, I my background's a little different, weirder than yours are. Um, so I trained as a physician scientist, and then decided to kind of get. I kind of got sucked into the startup world because I was so sick of publishing papers that were going to end up on a journal and like on a shelf that nobody's going to read. And so I really love startups because you're really going out and taking an idea and really distilling that down to what is the essence. And at least in the diagnostic space that I'm in. We've never had a sustainable impact on clinical outcomes outside of this commercialization space. So if we're just publishing papers, you're not actually going to translate that and distill it into kind of what it takes to impact people's lives. Um, so that, that's my background. Um, and I, I think you know, the, the question you brought up really, really speaks more to culture. And I think it's a good point because we can sometimes be so focused on what we're actually building and like that, that tangible product that we're making, and we forget that you're building things in other dimensions too. You're also growing a company, and you're also building that culture. And it, I don't know about you all, I, I assume we've all been successful in extremely cutthroat, very hostile environments. And we, we can do that, we can choose to live that way, but we could also choose to build a culture where we're supportive and we continue to push the envelope without being assholes. And it, so I think for me, culture is trying to, trying to build that and having you know, the, the leaders are the people who can, who can act on that and try and figure it out. And I think just like everything in a startup, I, I was like raised in academia by a pack of wolves, so I had to figure this <laughs> stuff out, right? Um, and so you just recognize that this is something that's important that you work on um, and you keep getting better at it. So, um, uh, is there another one? I thought we said yeah, that. there's another one. All right, good. Uh, all right, this is um, working in versus working on the business. And we've been talking about that. I think you had a good synopsis of, you know, uh, focusing on the bigger picture management versus leadership, right? Working in versus working on the business. It's, and, and, and like, you're kind of fucked. Because like, when you're starting out, you're basically working in on and, and like, you know, you're having and you're like, fuck the garbage. I still do. Like, I fucking still take the garbage out. I still fucking take the garbage out. Um, ben, do you take the garbage out? <laughs> like, do any of yeah, 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 yeah. So I still think the fucking garbage out. It's like, what the, I mean, Corey, you, you take it out more than I do. <laughs> but my, my point is, so like, 
you're always going to be doing a lot of everything as the founder and CEO. But you know, there's a lot of things that I just don't do today, and these guys are going to have to make that guys gender neutral are going to have to make that transition from working in and on the business to eventually just working quote unquote on the business, right? That that thousand foot view or fifteen thousand or twenty thousand foot view, so scaling up, if you will. And I, and any insights? I mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't, I'd say, so. <laughs> uh, that one's a toughie, so if you want to go first, yeah. that, right? Like, so leadership to me, especially in the context of starting a company, is it, it's a transition. It's going to change. So what you have to be good at today is maybe putting together a business plan. Next, <clears throat> next month, next year, you have to inspire people to make a bet on you and that that's going to return money. And once you have the money, then now you've got to go build a bigger team and put all that together. And then it becomes about managing people and at least for me that that's probably the most difficult part because you have to convince people to do something that they don't necessarily want to do every day and then to not sleep and keep doing that over and over again uh, so yeah it, it is I think it's it's all about all about transition um, yeah I think I think the biggest obstacle there is when you move from in to on how do you keep inspiring people uh, to work better. You know, you lead by example, if you don't show up at the office, even if you are working a lot, you know, people are going to be slacking, people are going to be missing the inspiration, thinking that, hey, you know, that's it, you know, you, you made it, you don't make the effort. And I think that's really the tough part, is you're going to still need to do the in, even if on paper you need to do the uh, on. Um, and yeah, it's really this transition, still managing to inspire the people, that is uh, the tough part. There I am. So I was out of the office court for three weeks. Were people fucking hustling when I was gone? Yes or no? You can be honest. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you had to make yeah, though. That's that's that didn't feel very good. <laughs> Only I say yes because if no, then they would have had to face you when you got back. Um Let's keep this one short because I'm actually not quite sure, but um, the very, very high vision of your organization and where you want to be in 10 years is really important. But as Peter Thiel says, why can't you make that 10-year goal happen in six months? So constantly be hustling to make it happen faster. Um, and in your, you're going to be wearing a lot of hats. So remember to prioritize, find those essentials, push everything else to the side, and do things that calm you down along the way, hang out with family, friends, meditate. Well, you you open this. Can I? Can I? Do you have a comment? Because I want to riff on what he just said. Well, one, one quick thing is what I would say is that as CEO and founder, to me, it's like you're basically the chief sales officer and you're the chief visionary, right? So to be honest, if you're not spending your time selling your vision on the company to investors to talent and sort of making that vision a reality. If you're spending your time in like the weeds of the operations, you're doing a disservice to your company. So you need to pull out of the weeds and get people who are really good at the operations quickly. Yes. Because then you're just, you're just hurting your own company. Oh, that was great actually. All right, so I wanna go back to what you uh, said as sort of the next line here, and it was mentioned also by a few of the other members, which is, you know, speed, speed, <coughs> speed, right? You got to get focus and speed. So you're at, call it level one, level zero, whatever, whatever you want to name it, point five, you, you want, like, you want to get to level ten very quickly, right? So that's very hard, right? This is, Super, super hard. I mean, I, I think back to what I did, and you know, we're in 200 cities, um, but it's eight years. Uh, but we, we, you know, it was we got big fast. How do you get how from them now? And now, now they got the focus. They got the selling of the vision. How do they go from level zero to level ten as quickly as possible? And again, I'll I'll open it up to anyone that wants to take that. First. 
donated my money. Money. <laughs> um, jump to level 10 and bounce back to level 1. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. well, that's, that's interesting. What do you mean by that? Yeah, yeah there, there are probably ways where you can test the water in the level 10. It doesn't mean that you need to be sustainable, uh, that you need to be able to back this level. You know, you might be able to find a client, you know, to to find a solution to something that is level 10. Uh, doesn't mean that you need to have a thousand people operations that allow you to support it on the long term. Yeah, so, you know, I, that's, that's interesting. interesting. So you're basically like, fake it till you make it. <laughs> so, is the, like, kind of, so try it. So we, we quickly left to like four cities, eight, we doubled the number of cities in every year or less than every year ago, now we're at 200. But like making those leaps were just like complete leaps of faith, right? They were not really like... Yeah, and one of the ways to do this is to do it manually. You know, you're gonna launch something that you don't have the structure to do, you might not be able to automatize it to scale it, but you launch it and you get some people just to manually do something that on paper everybody thinks that you have automatized, that you have wrought on something like this. And until Broke, you know, it's you know. worth, you know, either it's gonna break or it's worth investing to really automatize and get to the next level in the proper way. Um, cool, cool, okay. Um, well, just to quick say, as Richard Branson says, when someone asks you to do something that you're not quite sure if you're gonna do or not, say yes and then figure out how the hell you're actually going to do it. Um, and that'll force you to get outside your comfort zone and innovate and create, think fast and execute. Um, Mark was just saying a second ago, I actually think he nailed the head. Um, if you want to scale quickly to, um, to level 10, you need to do what he was saying earlier, which is uh, dele delegate and prior, and we were talking about essentialism, like. Put things to the side that are not important. <coughs> Go and hustle on the big level people as often as possible. The enterprise clients that are going to pay you tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Hustle with people that are way smarter than you as often as possible. And uh, do that in your full time. Go get money, pitch more people, ask them for connections. Do that over and over and over again and let other people do other things. Now, if you're working by yourself, then do just as much of the little stuff that you need to get by, but don't hyper-focus on the little stuff. Actually, a quick thing, this actually has helped me a lot recently. Read the, or in your mind, you look at the email, you think of your reply, and you type the reply and click send. Don't reread your emails. Nobody cares if you have one typo, nobody cares if you added an and or an or or something like that. Get emails done fast and make windows of time for emails so you can do your emails fast in like 10, 20 minutes. Get that done, move along. I know people that spend hours of their day emailing. It can actually be a waste sometimes. Just move your thought. Emails, of course. <laughs> <laughs> we just gave up on it. We just slacked. <laughs> you know, I'm going to be a little contrarian and say that it, I think one of the one of the themes in startup startup world is to get a a piece of crap that doesn't quite smell very bad out into the world as quickly as possible. And we're, we're in this diagnostic realm, so it's actually illegal for us to go out and get <laughs> orders. <laughs> before we have FDA approval. So I, I have a little bit of cover, but I think it, it gives me a little bit of a different perspective where you know, we get, we, we've done very well by focusing heavily on what, are, what our core product is, making what it is that we want to sell really just a hundred times better than what's existed since, in our case, since the Civil War. And you know, like, so if you focus on the fundamentals, and I imagine that you know, when you start Founders Institute, you had a game plan and you tested that, yes. and then and you started that. And it's kind of like building a franchise. You have to have your model before you really scale it up and grow it. Um, so I would say that you know, this traditionally a a diagnostics company is going to take hundreds of millions of dollars and you know, a decade to get out great tests. Um, and we've certainly learned from all the advice that's around us, and for a few hundred thousand dollars in just a couple years, 
we've got a test that's probably going to have a bigger clinical impact than anything that's come along in genomics so far. Um, so we certainly learn from that, but I would be very careful not to push out something that's a potpourri pile of crap, right? Like have something substantial and don't be afraid and, and don't like don't apologize for focusing on what your core product is. Yeah, I, I would quickly add to that. I would say my two pieces of, of advice when you're scaling up, be pragmatic and focus. There's a shitload of people bullshitting out there. And the investors can smell it. <laughs> Smoking mirrors. So don't don't say, don't, don't say, hey, we're gonna change the world, blah, 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 the market cap is a trillion, we'll get a percent. Bullshit. <laughs> Bullshit. Be pragmatic, we're focused, we're gonna do, we're gonna fix this problem, and that's it. Done. We're the Uber for this. <laughs> well, I, I, I'd love to, though, I, I, I do think, I think you said it again, Mark, though, uh, you're killing it tonight on the, on the starters, but like, this setting this sort of obnoxious goal, and I, I forget who said it because all of, I've been all of you are like in party. This is awesome. Let's just give a round of applause for how awesome this is. <laughs> how about, let's give a real round of applause for how awesome it is. So, all right, uh, getting outside of your comfort zone, setting goals that seem absurd, uh, you know, this, that, that's one of the techniques, right? And, but it's a lot harder said than done, because it's like, you, you're by default in your comfort zone. Right? It's not like, get out of your comfort zone. It's like, how do I do that? Like, you know, Take your shirt like, off right now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Not take your shirt off right now. Well, I can take my shirt off right now, but I'm wearing two shirts. So, uh, um, yes, S stripping naked on the street would be an example of getting out of your comfort zone for most people. Don't do that. But, like, what are some things, like, how, how, how do you get out of your comfort zone? How do, how do they get out of their comfort zone and then realize, saying yes to Richard Branson or, or pushing themselves to a place that they're like, oh my God, I don't know if I can do this. And then they can. I mean, I, I almost want to start with you because you, you, you brought up, Brandon, that like you're in a conservative um, space. Do you, do you push yourself outside your comfort zone? <coughs> no. <laughs> um, right, and I think that's okay. But I, well, I have the opposite problem, right? So I've got this idea in my head that, that if is I out told you. people who were sitting across the table from me with a check, they would run out of the room. So I have to kind of like bullshit it down a few levels and make it sound practical and realistic. And you know, exactly like you said, right? Be be very focused, very tangible. This is this is the test that we're making, this is how I'm gonna sell you on it. And then in my head, I have a bigger picture of how that's all gonna fit together. So you, you yeah. have a bigger vision. You have something possibly even outside the comfort zone of other people, but you have to dumb it down. So maybe my question for these guys is a little different. So you may be already outside of the normal level. How do they get outside of the comfort zone? Do you want to say something first? Um, well, there's some really simple strategies to get out of your comfort zone really early um, that don't require you to get naked and run around Golden Gate Park. Um, <laughs> one, one of them, Thank which, God. which I, I actually, Baker Beach is a nude beach. I totally recommend you to go and take a dip in the Pacific completely naked. It is, yeah, that's I, right. I, I do love not that. recommend that you do that. <laughs> It's, it's a really good idea. Um, now, uh, something that's definitely a layer of a level or two below that is something that Tim Ferriss says will get you out of your comfort zone really quickly. And I know a lot of people here aren't a big fan of it because you like hot showers, right? Well, Tim says, get in a cold shower. And it doesn't have to be freezing cold, but even maybe the last minute of the shower, just put it on like lukewarm to cold temperature and let your, bathe yourself in the colder temperature. And then do things like when you know that you're reaching out to somebody that's absolutely nuts, like really high level, high caliber person, try to not even email them. Pick up the phone and call them. Pick up the phone and call them. 
Figure out a connection that one of your friends has to someone that works there, and then get them to give you, be an ambassador for you, and say, this person's gonna be good, you should meet with them, you should have a call with them, etc. Forget about the email. Get there faster. Um, and then, and you're, you are that great. Confidence is key in leadership. You are that great. You can achieve that goal. You can talk to that person. You can make shit happen for yourself. Look in the mirror. Kanye does this best. Look in the mirror and say, I love Alan. I love Alan. And you look in the mirror and you say that to yourself over and over again. You will achieve your dreams and your goals and you will be confident when you walk out and hang out with people that are really high caliber. What well, are you not Alan? <laughs> I love Alan. <laughs> I love Nate. I love the here. guy here. <laughs> Um, just think outside of the box, you know, if, if you can't find a way to do something, just take it from a different angle, whether it's yours, <coughs> put yourself in the shoes of somebody else, and always test an idea, even if it's with yourself. Even if it sounds crazy, go for it, and if it doesn't work, well, look for another way, another angle, um, until it doesn't look crazy, or maybe because you went far enough on the first one, the second one that is still crazy is less crazy, so it will work. Aren't you guys already out of your comfort zone? <laughs> so like, you should be out of your comfort zone. I, I would think, like, going through the program and everything, it should have tested you quite a bit. So I would think, like, nothing is going to be so comfortable in this ride, and most likely you already know that. So I, I would more, it's more how do you handle it when you're not in the comfort zone. And I think there are ways to deal with that, I guess. But, I mean, I think inevitably, as you're like building a company, you're not really ever gonna be that comfortable because the ride is gonna get rocky, right? So, sort of, how do you deal with that meeting with a partner at Sequoia when your heart is racing and you're really nervous? Like, I, I think it's actually little details like that that are more dealing with the pressure of being outside the comfort zone than getting, like just getting comfortable with with that type of stress, and I think that is a real a real thing that you need to probably work on because as you scale a company, I mean you know once you have 50 folks in that company, their their families, their their lives are sort of somewhat depending on you, then 100, then 200, then 500, then a thousand people, and then they have kids, and then they're gonna have kids. So I think. <laughs> You know, that is like dealing with a certain level of stress and having the confidence to say, yes, I can lead these people and really help them build a better life. So I think that's sort of like being outside the comfort zone, but being comfortable with it and knowing that, yeah, you can make this shit happen and these people can rely on you. Wow, that was awesome. <laughs> so, uh, pieces of advice and then I'd like to hear we don't have all the graduates but the cat uh, I don't know why but we'll save that for another time <laughs> we have most of the graduates I'd like to hear most of the graduates so when we come down this way this time five closing pieces of advice before we hear the pitches yeah, you know when I look at like the leadership as a quasi academic field these books that people publish it it makes me it makes me sad because it makes me think that they're, they're, people don't need help with leadership, they just need like little bumper stickers of inspiration. And for me, leadership is all the shit that doesn't fit on a bumper sticker, right? It's taking out the garbage when nobody else is. It's trying to figure out like how you're gonna make that, that amount of funding last until you fill that next funding round. Um, and, and it's all the thing, it's kind of filling in all the things that I think the, the, the the inspirational books kind of leave out. At least for me, there, there's a big gap in the literature that I don't think is addressed. Um, I would say it's not all about you. So if you are not comfortable, if you have a skill that you don't have, just find someone that can help you and fill that gap. 
Uh, I didn't get to touch on this too much, so I just want to quickly touch on it. It's uh, emotional intelligence. We're all very familiar with it. Um, something that I've been working on myself a lot over time and trying to help people with. Um, so emotional intelligence, in a really easy way to understand this, is uh, building rapport with people. Um, and in order to build rapport with people, you've got to know who you're talking to. So if you're talking to someone like a Deo, a Deo doesn't really talk like you know, Adeo talks like this, and so you want to talk back to him like this. And then, so mirroring and matching people, um, expressing to them genuine empathy about who they are, where they came from, um, asking them questions about uh, what they're passionate about, how they're about to achieve that with their dreams and what they're trying to do in their company. And um, the, two, the two other things, so that's emotional intelligence, just give that a go. Um, you're already giving it a go. And then other thing would be um, focus. We've touched on focus so much today. Put shit to the side. Focus on what you need to do to get shit done. And the last thing would be get in a daily routine where you're actually hammering out what you love doing every day and taking care of your health along the way. I would just say integrity. It all comes down to integrity. Just be genuine. Be transparent. Be a good person. Don't be an asshole. And make it happen. Nice. All right. Woo! Woo!